guys, this is Chris Appleton of Absolver, and you're listening to Angel Gareth of the RFM. Oh, is that a promo copy? Uh, yeah, yeah, everyone says that, and they keep trying to steal them. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a promo copy, actually. I did bring you a present, but somebody stole it, and I want to know who stole my pineapple because they're pineapple thieves. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it is pineapple thieves down in Bristol, in yes. the Fleece. Yeah, nice little venue. Yeah, well, to be honest, like because um, like my hometown's Yeovil, about forty miles down the road, and Bristol is like probably the local gig because the localist. Yeah, because like venues are really struggling. Like the venue we had in town um, closed down like a few years ago because of uh, I think a lot I mean the police has struggled as late with licensing there was everything. something about this closing there yeah. was something in a petition going around to stop it exactly and it's still running because it's a fantastic little venue it's, the thing I love about this place is the history you can you know, all the huge bands that have come through Been some here. big bands yeah. play here so, I've seen Dora Porsche yeah um, you I name mean, it you can, been here. you can feel the vibe yeah definitely you know and think they've been in this room yeah, I know, yeah. Probably doing the same as you now, chilling yeah. out and relaxing yeah. before you get on stage tonight. Now, we're going to talk about this. A new album from you out as well. Yeah. Is this the debut album? Sorry? This is not your debut album, though, is no, it? No, 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 no. No, um, I, I mean, the, 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 the band started in 1999. Well, when, I, when I say a band, it was just me. Um, on a very, very small independent label called Cyclops. And it, it, I re- released the first album... At, struggled to sell 500 copies but that was enough at the time for the for the guy the label which was basically a guy in a cupboard somewhere um to say yeah let's do another one so he's moved up now to a bigger cupboard well yeah well yes exactly <laughs> he's bigger cupboard for him now and um yeah so so and then after about four albums we we, we had enough people to just who were clamoring for us to play live so at that point I, I i got my friends together to form a band so it's just been going since then, you know. So there's no uh, no inclination of wanting a band. It's suddenly like people want you to play live, and it's like hell. Now we've got to find people exactly, that can actually yeah. play. Exactly, exactly. And and the early days were tough because um, it it was a learning curve, you know. And not that I haven't played live before, but there was a there was a level that we hit that hit the live circuit that we weren't ready for. And um, I think it's only over the last sort of four years that the band has really got to pick got up to grips with with what you got to do to to, to, to make it work on the live circuit because you've got to work you've got to work, work hard it. on it yeah. do you know what i mean yeah like i said the new album is not out when is it out it's, oh it is oh yep, it is yep, september yep, released yep, it's a uh, yeah. couple of dates on here you got what we now with the third don't we third fourth yeah so fourth, we're near we're near the fourth, end manchester near, and edinburgh to near go the end of the tour. tour yeah so it's a short tour really only 15 dates but um uh, so we've we finished mainland so this has gone really well like last time we we did the mainland it was it was hard you know getting people out in germany wasn't easy but this time we've tripled the the audiences so i was gonna say for a band that started out like you have and worked at it yeah on doing european tours must have been really hard yeah and now you're getting that fan base out there which is most weirdest thing yeah yeah if you stop to think about it you know you, you turn up in a town like dresden in germany and you know hundreds of people come out i mean obviously you, you want it to be thousands but the fact that you can do that is 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 a privilege really a hundred um, people and, though from yeah. a small place exactly. like that For, you know, you know. i mean it's a, a large it's a city but it's still in the you know the arse end of germany so it was uh, so to do that is um to think that we could probably turn up at any city and get that Europe, sort of crowd. Yeah, Mexico, the States, Brazil, all those. If we could, we, we, we would be able to do a gig. You'd do it. So, yeah, so it's, uh, so, yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's been a hard road, you know, 15 years. It's a long road. It is a long road. But the good thing about starting at rock bottom, you know, like literally with no fan base, is that it's easy to keep Work up, yourself upward up. curve. Yeah. I think if you're um, having an upward curve always keeps the motivation. So you set yourself up goal? Uh, you know what? I don't set myself any goals anymore. I think as long I think as and the band realizes that if we start to lose fans, you know, we come back here and there's less people coming through the door, then you've got to start asking some serious questions. And what's going wrong? Yeah, 
yeah. And uh, and and but luckily, I, I mean, we've already the the, the sale, the pre-sales for tonight's gig is already twice as many as last time we played here. So that's good. So it's a good sign. Yeah, that is good considering what day it is as well. It's midweek. It's a Thursday. And people are skint as well. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so so we don't forget that that you know it doesn't. To be honest, I, I, we don't care how many people come through the door because we still these are people are paying to see us play. So we always put on the, the the same show as much energy as we can. But at the same time, we can't afford to do it unless people come people out. come out yeah. to see you. Yeah. Now, have you got anybody else with this tour, or is it just yourselves going on? Um, for these, we've got three gigs that we're playing for some young lads in uh, a really exciting young rock band called Crystal Seagulls. So they're playing with us tonight. Um, in Europe, we played with some um, with two bands, um, uh, Liquid Landscape and um, Les Soir. Um, you know, there, there's so many talented bands around. Oh, and, uh, a lot. And I think the other thing is you take it for granted that you've got a fan base. You know, we, we come out and we're moaning that, oh, we're only playing to 200 people tonight. Um, but these guys are coming out and they're just starting up and thinking, if what? You're starting on the bottom rung with no fan base, you've got a great band, but and you, it's, it, it's the real chicken and egg thing because no one's going to no no one no management or agency or label is going to pick you up not nowadays unless you've got a, a fan base but how do you get a fan base without a backing so it's it's the that's the industry. hardest part about yeah, it and then you could like i said you've got to get out there you've got to tour to get the fans to come out and see you you've got yep. to try and get yourself those support slots with bands so that then you can say hey come on i'll listen to us exactly and come over to our side and the yeah. trouble with support slots is there's absolutely no money, and a lot of the big bands you you you, you buy on to support yeah. tours, and that's you know, the and hardest thing. So it's pretty tough, pretty tough industry, and um and you know and you hear a lot of people complaining about the state of the music industry, but these are the big boys that are that are making vast sums of money, millions, you know, yeah, and complaining there's not enough talent coming through, but there is talent out there, but they're not giving them the chance to get out there and no, and no, support so, them on the tour. Yeah, now Magnolia. Who did most of the writing for the album? All me. All you. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think that's because it started as a solo project, and songwriting-wise, it's, it's, it's me. Hit and, up. Um, and uh, although the band are integral with in terms of production and what they bring to the part, so it's not like I tell John, our bass player, you must play this, or Dan, you must play that. They they, they come in and they produce. They, we we chop chop songs around, and and also if if they don't like a song, then. And it's vetoed. You know, so you, you, they get the last vote. On oh it, yeah, at yeah. the end of the it's day. Be, yeah, I'm wrong. Band. I want it in the set. Yeah, no. Exactly, yeah. And that's the end of it that's for you. That's the end. Yeah. No, like I said, it's the artwork on the album as well. It's mm -hmm. fantastic artwork. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm, I mean, again, that, that was Dan, our drummer, who um, who who discovered this French artist, um, Patrick Gonzalez. His name is, and uh, a lot of people have picked up on on, on the cover. It's and, quite uh, an unusual looking cover because i mean nobody could see the size of it on this mm. but i mean i've looked at it on your web page which if you want to go check them out facebook yeah. youtube yeah and dot com as well yeah pineapplethief.com yeah so, um yeah and if you see the vinyl that's the best you know it looks it looks beautiful oh you got vinyl copy yeah, of this out as well the old merch, oh. stand, yeah so uh, vinyl's it? flying off the shelf actually yeah, i was just gonna say what is it with bands bringing vinyl back it's it's having a resurgence i mean uh the uh the label we're on now k-scope are, are, are releasing on the entire back catalog all 10 albums on vinyl, on vinyl. Yeah, i know there's... blaze bailey's re-releasing silicon messiah on vinyl mm. he's been asked by thousands for it yeah. To get it released on final. And he's released it now on final. But Rival Sons have done it. Yeah. You know, there's so many bands out there just releasing final and final. And mm. for a band like yourselves to have final coming out. Yeah. I've got to be honest, I prefer a final yeah. than a CD. All right, CD's great for in the car. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But a final is holding that in your hand. Definitely, yeah. You know, and yeah. the artwork, you can see more on the artwork as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, I grew up listen, you know, going to rec you know, second-hand record shops and you know, walking around with bags of vinyl and opening gatefolds of booklets oh. and all that kind of stuff. It's part of the magic, isn't it? So. Well, that's it. So what's your influences to get into music then? Uh, I wasn't from a musical background at all. Um, I think it was when I was 14. I just, just hung out with some mus musical types at school and they, they, they convinced me to pick up a guitar and I said, oh, it's too late, isn't it? It's too late in the day because I was surrounded by people that could already play. Play, so... Um, so I bought, like, a really cheap, like, nylon string guitar and that was it, you know. See, now that's yeah. the unusual part with you. Like you said, you didn't have a musical background. You didn't have anyone there, parents with music, playing no. anything. It was down to friends encouraging you. Yeah, it was. making you. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and I think, you know, like, when you get to a certain age, that's when... That's when you do get get 
your inspiration is from from the people. So you had the around. opposite end of bullying. You had the bullying into getting into play something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you had the good bullying yeah, part of it. Yeah, you know. So yeah. you could say, yeah, I was bullied into playing it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's worked out well for you guys, hasn't it? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I remember when I first was struggling to get to grips with the guitar, all I wanted to do was play in a band at my local pub. You know, if I had done that, then that would, that would be it. That, that, I could tip that, was, that was the bucket that list was, then. Yeah, that was it. And, you know, so everything after that was, was a bonus. Which is the hardest part, the writing or the playing or the singing? I th well, I, I think writing is the hardest. I think if I could go back in time, I would love to give myself some advice about performing performing and um because you know being a good front man because that 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 came through a lot of hard experience it's because you get some bands come out there great young bands coming up and the front man it, it's just amazing yeah and then you got the backing band the rest of the band and it's like really what's the point yeah a little timid timid and also you see great bands with bad front men you know as soon as a front man shows any kind of fear the audience, oh, the, the crowd is they're like swore, animals on yeah, him, and yeah, it? it's like exactly. throw him into that pit of lions, exactly. Man, for yeah. God's and sakes. then it just gets worse and worse, and it's just. And I've been there, and I've been there. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, you got to remember that these people are paying money to see you. So you just got to give them, you the, just gotta give them what you can. Them, yeah. Just, what about festivals for yourselves? Um, well, yeah, I, at the moment we've got a, a, a festival next year, a, quite a big one um, called Rambling Man that we're that we're playing in in Moat Park in Kent and um, and then we're discussing some other um, European festivals and hopefully going over to Mexico City as well so, so that's going to be quite a good yeah yeah hopefully next summer we'll get, be able to get out yeah but yeah. European festivals are the best ones as well they just seem to be able to put them on with less pressure you know on bands just you know. so children relax I yeah. did Hellfest this year yeah um, amazing festivals yeah. cracking bands there yeah Brilliant. I mean, then, you go you go around the Netherlands, and the venues are all subsidised by the government. You you know they support bands by law yeah. have to be paid 150 euros. So it doesn't you know, and so ev ev so there is no nobody is abused in the music industry. In, that's in, that's in the, the difference. The like saying the Europeans, they seem to encourage the music. Yeah, and live venues here, it's a little bit different. Mm. Unless you've got somewhere like Sonosphere and all the other festivals where they struggle and they put it on yeah and they get it going and they get the crowds in and then you've just got a great festival what about british festivals for yourselves yeah I, we apart struggle from kent. apart from kent like last year we played us a, a fairly small i mean i think it's about six thousand people they're called why not in um in the middle well in the peak district i think it was um but we do struggle and i think sometimes the fact that we've been sort of lumped in with the progressive rock movement doesn't help us that's the difference as i was saying now is earlier on when i put that on in the car because i had the other single as well mm. and i didn't quite get to listen to it because i had so much stuff come through and it's yeah like, i had that one come through and i thought yeah let's stick it in the car steve messaged me Do you fancy going down interview guys down in bristol yeah so i thought stick it in the car i'd listen to it and i thought it's not what you'd expect mm. totally from the name like the pineapple I know, you'd I know. expect something loud Hard, thrashing, screaming, and mm. it's totally the opposite yeah. to that. Yeah. And it's like, I can actually enjoy listening to yeah. this. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's going to be something like, I'm going to come to a gig now, and I'm going to actually be able to hear what the singer is singing. Yeah. You know. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If not, I'll just stick the CD on in the back and turn yeah. the stereo yeah. up, all right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, you can just get that sort of vibe and that. And I went on to face, um, YouTube mm. and checked out some of the earlier stuff as well. Yeah. I just thought, wow amazing yeah. stuff yeah thanks you know just if, if anyone's got to do it go check youtube out for mm. you guys just don't just look at the what? early live things that people have taken with their phones whatever you do but um but that's probably the worst thing about yeah. it because you can't capture the sound tidy oh up. yeah it's horrible and, and in the early days when we were playing to like a handful of people in pubs and, and you've got pineapple deep live at, you know and it's like oh the sound is bad and we're playing bad it's like but you know Everything else is cool. Go check it. What about doing a live DVD? That's happening next year. Yeah. So that's we've done ten albums and no live DVD. So everyone's we've got a lot of people asking for that. So that's so the that's next happening thing. next year. Yeah. Is that going to be on a tour? I think we're going to do a one-off special show in London, and um, I'm hoping to get some string a string section in and things like that. Double um, out. Yeah. Not too big because it costs a fortune. Gym. Um, but for a one-off get one-off show and somewhere really nice in London probably, and uh, just make it a. And, uh, 
Albert Hall. Yeah, <laughs> no, that would be ideal, wouldn't That'd it? That'd be great, yeah. wouldn't it? Would, yeah. Just try and get all your fans in there from all over the country. Do you know, if, if everyone world. turned up from all over the world, then we, yeah, we'd pack it out two nights over, I think. If we, if, if everyone, if you could get if it. we could fly, fly in everyone in the world, yeah. If you could do it. But the, yeah. like I said, it's, there's going to be a live DVD coming out with you guys. What about a live album? I think that'll be the same. So I think so generally case we would have a DVD and a CD. And a CD yeah. as well at the same time, so yeah. that's good. What about iTunes, Reverb Nation, Spotify? Yeah, all on there. It's on all, all digital. They can get all of you yeah. via that way. A couple of pennies. Or yeah. well, better off is just come to the venue, buy yeah. a copy of it, Yeah. buy a T-shirt. Oh, yes. <clears throat> uh, anything else on sale? One of we're having oh, t-shirts, some... CDs, album, the album final. Yeah, all the albums, um, all the vinyl. A used we, beer we had... bottle. <laughs> yeah, plectrums, yeah, hoodies. We had. Um, we did actually do some digital only live live that we just flogged on um, memory sticks. So there are there is some, some live stuff, stuff out there, like but that. it's but it's just a low key sort of digital download. So it's hard to get hold of. You can still get it. Yeah, you can buy it. Still yeah, buy it. You still buy it for download. Yeah, on so the merch, on on merch and on our website. So that's pretty so, good. Yeah. Then that that's still available. Still for available. People, yeah, so that's not too yeah. bad. But they can also get the album off you from the web page of the company. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, what now? We just saying now before we start this about Wales. Mm-hmm. You guys haven't been over into the over the waters yet to Wales. No. Very strange. You go over to Europe, but not you can't get one, yourselves into not Wales. Not for guys. want of trying. Not for want of trying. I mean. um <coughs> When when we when we route a tour, and we always get people that say, "Why, why aren't you coming to Newcastle? Why aren't you coming to you know um, I don't know? We're playing Edinburgh, and people are saying, "Why aren't you coming to Glasgow?" And they says, "Well, we just, we just can't. We just can't it's... afford to do it." And um, you know, it's only it's not a very long train journey to get to Edinburgh if you really want to see us. And then the fact that we can get get to Scotland and do one show sure. is is already pushing it. Well, so, the thing with that is, is we were saying as well, it's the cost of fuel. Yeah. Cost of staying somewhere as well. Well, yeah, luckily we, we got a bus, um, um, but that that bus costs a lot of money That's every it. day, and we got crew, and we they've got to be looked after. No, not no you don't have to look after them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, they can go out and scrounge for exactly. yeah, That's, that's what they're for, isn't it? Be. Yeah, but it does cost a lot of money to put a, a show put on. A tour on the road, and also we want to make the tour decent. So we've got a decent, you know, we've got a decent crew. You know, we've got a lighting engineer, front of house engineer, we've got them um, stage techs. So it's a hell of a lot of people yeah, on the road. Yeah, so it's fun. We all, you know, we all have a great time. But it, it, I think if people think, "Wow, this band is successful. They must be making lo- loads of money," then they, they're they've mistaken. got a bus. <laughs> they got a bus with a trailer on. Yeah, it. and that's hey. why we're broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Every penny goes into fuel. Yeah, costs. fuel and the bus costs. Yeah. So, um, but I'm not complaining. I, you know, I'm not moaning about it. But um, but when people say, "Why aren't you playing here? Why aren't you playing there?" It's just we just can't afford it. If people, if if more people came out to the sort of the the, the, the other the other cities, then 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 we definitely would. So, are you going to be looking at doing another UK tour next year? But I putting think in, so. Trying yeah. to squeeze in those places that you've missed, sort of say, on this one. That would be good. That would be good to do. Um, I will have to speak to our agent and see. Uh, it's just supply and demand at the bottom. At the end of the day, it always is. It always yeah. comes down to getting out there yeah. UK festivals I'd like to see you at some of them yeah yeah and I've I seen think your names up on some of the big UK festivals a lot of people say out. that yeah but it's so difficult to get you know, getting your it's, name a, it's a very closed shop as well there's a there's a there's a, a very, very sort of limited number of promotional companies that run all of these festivals so unless you're in with them it's not easy it's hard as hell yeah it's hard as hell but you're from Yeovil yeah. So you're not far to go home tonight to get some sleep. Well, we're going to Manchester tonight. Oh, so you're finishing Ironically, up yeah, to yeah. Manchester. So all my mates are coming to this gig, and they say, all right, bye, you can go home, and we're off to Manchester. Oh. <laughs> so they're going to rub it in. And what yeah. you, you're going to say, get the missus to come up and say, take my washing and bring yeah, some fresh yeah, washing. Oh, yeah, I could do with that, yeah, home. yeah. But it's not that bad, because we just pile onto the bus and uh, drink some beer and then get in our bunks and wake up at the next venue. So Hopefully. It's not a hard life. It's not that bad. No. Now, what's the hardest thing that being on the road is, though, for you? I think it's just the amount of hanging around and time. Because, like, you know, last night we played London. Driver drives overnight. We arrive at Bristol at 8 in the morning. And then you've you've just got to hang around. And till this until, venue's until ready Until the venue's ready, in. yeah. So, uh you know, it's no great, great hardship, but when you're doing this day in, day out, it's like... Yeah, uh, but that must be even harder for you, though, as you come in, you know, you come from London to Bristol, yeah. you're here at 8 o'clock in the morning, you've got to hang around to this venue to open, to yeah. let you in, and you're thinking, 
40 mile down the road and I could be at yeah, home having true. a cup of tea and something to eat, yeah. a clean bath, a yeah. shave, yeah. and then I could get back here in time for the gig. That's true, actually. Yeah, I should have done that, shouldn't I? Uh, train look, see? Yeah. Uh, delays end on the motorway trying to get back. I know, that would be <laughs> well, it, wouldn't it? it? Yeah. yeah, shows off. The rest of the band's on stage going, well, <laughs> he should have gone home, should he? Yeah. Show must go on, though, that's the thing. Oh, definitely. That's what we always say, the show will go on by hook or by crook. That's right? the way. How many is there in the band? Only four. There's only the four-piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's yourself. Keys, um, myself, guitar and vocals, and uh, John on bass and Dan on drums. So, yeah, it's a pretty tr- sort of traditional classic lineup, really. So it's so quite a small mm. run of yeah. the mill. Yeah. But great sound, I've got to be honest. Is, oh, uh, I, I do say is go out and get Magnolia, because the first single off it, the title track single yeah. is fantastic. Great, thanks. I've been listening to it, and it's just one of those ones that's a catchy little tune. Cheers. But there's not only that, there's the other ones that are on YouTube, and there's mm-hmm. the other nine albums that are out there as yeah. well for people to get hold of. Yeah. So then get them, let's get it. Facebook is the Pineapple Thief. Yeah, official. forward slash Pineapple Thief and pineappletheef.com. And uh, yeah, just go on to YouTube and search Pineapple Thief. Twitter? Yo, oh, yes, yes. So we, they're on we, Twitter. We as are well. active on Twitter, so yeah. So you can catch these guys on anywhere like that, but you'll catch them on the road. Is the next one's Manchester, the last one's Edinburgh. Yeah, Ruby Lounge in Manchester tomorrow, and uh, Ed, and the Liquid Rooms in Edinburgh on so that's Saturday. That's going to be good. And then a nice long drive back home with a massive hangover. Yeah. With a massive. That's what you want. <laughs> that's what you want at the end of a tour. Is exactly. A massive hangover. Yeah. Not halfway through it. Not yeah. at the beginning of it. At the end of it, yes, the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't go wrong. Well, Bruce, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to playing this track tomorrow night as well because I'm working tomorrow, so I'll get this track slapped out and out there for you guys. Great, thanks very much. It's been a Appreciate pleasure. it. Thanks a lot, uh, Bruce. From of course, the Pineapple Thief. Go check him out. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, dot com. They're there somewhere. Cheers. Pleasure. Enjoy the show. I'm thanks. looking forward to thanks it. Thanks very much. Cheers, Bruce. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Hi guys, this is Chris Appleton of Absolver and you're listening to Angel Gareth on PRFM.